think you can tell from the looks of me, uh, since I look like Bilbo Baggins' stunt double, <laughs> I'm not the outdoorsy type. Uh, my idea of roughing it is like if the champagne is insufficiently chilled. <laughs> ideological opposition to camping as well as just a practical matter. Uh, because camping is the whitest thing you can possibly do. Because camping is just acting like a homeless person, but just for a weekend. You can stop at any time. Right? It's Kobo cosplay, is what that is. It's cultural appropriation. It's like a sorority girl in a Native American headdress. Cut that out. That's not your thing. <laughs> If you don't believe me, uh, go ask your black friend. And I said friend, not friends, because I'm looking at some of you and I don't want to push it. <laughs> For a couple of you imaginary black friends, but let work with me. <laughs> go ask that dude if he'd like to go sleep outside on the ground with you for a weekend and see what his reaction is. Because I get it. Look, I mean, I'm Irish. Uh, we weren't culturally oppressed nearly to the extent of black people, but like we were first, we kept the seat warm. <laughs> and I'm only maybe the second or third generation in my family that's been allowed to sleep inside, and I'm not going to spit on that achievement by going fucking camping. <laughs> so, I mean, I support the farmers, because somebody's got to grow the overpriced organic produce I see at Whole Foods. <laughs> and who better to do that? than a guy that blows his nose by leaning out of the tractor and doing it onto the ground, because that's organic too. That's actually a USDA rule. <laughs> because organic, clearly we've decided that it's better to eat insects than insecticide. That's the trait we made culturally. I mean, I think occasionally it goes a little too far. Uh, my wife is now buying uh, organic like uh, shampoos, and uh, shower gels. A shower gel, by the way, is soap if you pay $12 a bottle for it. <laughs> and and you know, look, this isn't, this isn't a fight I'm going to have, right? I, I, I don't care what I smell like. I mean, you know, I just want to wash the stench of middle-aged desperation and failure off myself in the morning. That's, that's all I need, right? But uh, I did notice the other day that she had bought uh, a new shampoo, fairly traded honey. Now, I had two thoughts when I saw that label. Uh, the first is that fairly traded honey would be an awesome name for a vegan stripper. <laughs> and, and I ask you, please do not come up, at, come up to me after the show and say, uh, uh, you know, by the way, that vegans uh, are against all animal products, even from insects. So what you really mean is vegetarian stripper. Uh, because that tells me a couple of things about you. Uh, one. Uh, you don't understand how jokes work, because vegan stripper is funnier. That's a punchier <laughs> phrase that's got fewer syllables. Uh, and what that tells me additionally is that you would prefer to lecture me than actually uh, appreciate the performance. And also you have no sense of rhythm, uh, which means you are probably a vegan stripper. That's <laughs> how that equation works out. Uh, and the other thing that occurred to me when I saw that label uh, is that I don't think fairly traded honey exists. <laughs> if you don't believe me, uh, go ask bees. <laughs> because a bee is, the you know, bees are working all year to fill that honey coffer up, and then they come home one day and their house has been robbed. That's not a fair trade at all. <laughs> I don't care where you exist on the, the vegan to meat-eating scale. I think we can all agree that harvesting honey is a dick move. <laughs> At best. At worst, it's a plantation move. <laughs> and look, it's not a coincidence that beekeepers wear white outfits with a hood, right? That's not... <laughs> just a coincidence. And if you don't believe we're racist towards bees, I'd like to remind some of the younger people in the audience about the phenomenon of killer bees. <laughs> in the 1970s, uh, one redneck got bitten up in Texas, probably a farmer, and America lost its shit. 
We were all convinced, thanks to hyped up media stories, that a wave of killer bees, as they were called, were going to swarm up through Latin America, up through Mexico, over the Mexican border, and take jobs away from good, hardworking <laughs> North American bees. I believe the Donald Trump campaign is now firmly anti-bee for that reason. <laughs> And uh, it didn't happen, right? And they even made movies about that. That was the crazy part. They, they clearly decided to make disaster movies because the theory went that, like, one bee could scare the living shit out of your grandma. So if we put thousands of them on a big screen, it would scare the shit out of everyone. That's not actually how that math worked out. <laughs> and the bees didn't show up. And for 20 years, no one said shit about it until last decade, that same story came back only they'd been renamed. Clearly there was some sort of Illuminati meeting where they decided to do rebranding. <laughs> and then they were called Africanized Bees. Because clearly the only thing that would scare the shit out of America than Latin American bees would be Africanized Bees. <laughs> and I'd also like to point out that these are Africanized. Meaning they've been converted against their will. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Obama had something to do with it. <laughs> I believe it's his drone policy. <laughs> oh, fuck you! Do not get off board now! We started this journey together, we're gonna finish it together! <laughs>